Hello everyone, welcome to Babylon Balkan show. Uh, welcome. Welcome to our first episode. It, this is our first episode after intro, so we are excited. And in this episode, we discussed about like, what's up with the Macedonia with two young educated guy from Macedonia. One of our guests was Naum, Naum Trajanovski. Trajanovski? I am having some issues with the... Uh, Slavic surnames, but I will I will get used to. Yeah, uh, time. he's very educated guy, uh, young engineer, and he's also personally my hero because I lost my computer last summer, and he helped me to get it back. So he's our first guest. Yeah. So as you notice, there are two guests. The second one is Nikola Felkarovsky, my dear friend. I know him for years, and he's also a young engineer. And he's a really interesting perspective on different topics in life. And when it comes to Macedonia, he is proficient in that, given the fact that he's Macedonian. Uh, he has lived in different countries, studied in different countries, and uh, he can also explain things regarding how are the Macedonians living in Macedonia and outside. And in general, he's a really funny guy. He has interest in books, in movies, um, and he's a gamer. So also a, a bit of comedic side from so everything mashed up in one person so together with now they will have a really cool cool outlook on the general situation in macedonia in their home country and we will definitely have fun with them so welcome and enjoy this episode Hello, guys, and welcome to the Babylon Balkan show. Hello, welcome, everyone, and welcome to our guests. This is our first episode, so you are very like special for us f for being our first uh, first guests. So, yeah, welcome again, and I hope this will be fun. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Honored to be here, especially in this uh, podcast. Uh, great, great idea, I have to say. <laughs> Good to hear, yeah. Nice to have you guys both here. Thank you for answering our call. Um, as you said, yeah, this aim is to be fun and the content is also like uh, in going towards uh, interesting topics. But before we start, uh, we would like to have uh, like uh, a few icebreakers. So, Onat, would you do the, the me the honor and start yeah, with the uh, first one? My question will be, what was your dream when you were a kid, like to be, what was your dream to be when you were a kid? When you grow up. Yeah. Okay, I can start maybe. Um, Please. It was the, my dream was to be the president. That's so easy. <laughs> I think it's something I repeated too often to my family and they, they did not hesitate to remind me every gathering. It's a bit <laughs> embarrassing at least today, but yeah, uh, back then I thought we lived in a great country and that I would like to be its president things change sorry which country was it back then <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that after <laughs> okay okay cool <laughs> now you oh well i think my dream uh, deferred uh, every month or so depends uh, and it depended on the last uh, movie i watched so everything from a police detective to <laughs> To a psychologist, um, oof, I would say a psychologist was uh, something that that I thought about it often. As a kid. As a kid. <laughs> uh -huh. wow. Totally normal. Like you never heard a kid saying, "I want to be a brain doctor." Yeah. Well, I, have mention, I have to mention, I wanted to be the best uh, football player in the world, and look how it turned out. <laughs> It turned out. <laughs> you could have been a football player and psychologist. But do you want a psychologist or a shrink? Like the one that gives uh, prescriptions and the one that doesn't? I, did, I didn't know the difference then. <laughs> yeah. 
again, you were a kid. Yeah. <laughs> that wanted to be a psychologist and a football player. So, so yeah. we totally normalized that he wanted to be a psychologist. Yeah. Yeah. I, have to say, I have to say the psychologist came about, the psychologist wish came a little later, but yeah. And the the football is what I'm going with. <laughs> and I'm curious about the detective part. So, you know, there are a lot of detective movies. So you wanted to be like Axel Foley, like uh, in uh, Beverly Hills. Not to mention it, and I, I love that movie. <laughs> uh, or the Beverly Hills Cup, or you wanted to be like a Schwarzenegger, the detective in a kindergarten. There's also that <laughs> one. So <laughs> I, like would go with, I will go with Axel Foley right now. <laughs> Axel okay, okay, cool. And uh, Felker, so just a disclosure, he is Nicola, but nevertheless, all of us know him as Felker. So up until the end of the episode, he'll be named Felker, not to be any confusion. Yeah, so Felker, do you miss the, the opportunity of being a president or there's like a, still a chance of you being a president of any country whatsoever? I mean, you never know. Like, I cannot predict it, so thinking as a kid that I would be president and it turned out that I did not and now I don't want to be president so who knows maybe I will be president in, yeah. in some years and about which country well if I could choose I'll probably still not go with my own country but <laughs> the UK is a nice place a lot of uh, presidents and prime ministers are shifting these days so who knows maybe yeah, I guess I it'll I will become my turn again so Mm. They'll go for every, yeah, every citizen gets the chance in there <laughs> one by one. Exactly. And you mentioned UK. It's like it you made us like a really smooth transition. Why did you mention UK? Uh, Where are you right now? I am in the UK right now. Um it's hard to keep track because I've been moving quite a lot <laughs> these past few years. So my my current destination and I hope my uh, not my final but uh, at least for the next three to five years i hope that i'll be here that's mm. uh, where i started my career so yay i moved to the uk oh. in the most uh, turmoil period in its history which is the interesting fact but yeah i can right. agree with that yeah and uh, now you're currently where the uh, turmoil parts of the history in where exactly <laughs> in uk oh yeah i'm sure they didn't have bigger it terms was, <laughs> it was a smooth ride be before yeah. totally like nothing was going on there no no, no, no. it's just you know some some COVID, some uh president uh, prime ministers changing some mon monarch dying nothing else we don't we're, we're not gonna talk about it <laughs> <laughs> And now you're currently where? Currently I'm in my hometown of Oak Ridge and I'm constantly switching between uh, Skopje and Oak Ridge. I work in, in Skopje and mm -hmm. I spent maybe half of the year here in Oak Ridge because I love, I love this town and I love it more than Skopje actually. So, <laughs> so here I am. I can imagine being there a few times. So as you're already mentioning where you're living, both of you, um, it's now is the turn for my uh, icebreaker question. Since both of you share one common thing, at least, at least that one thing, that you're both Macedonians, can you tell me uh, how does it feel to be a Macedonian nowadays? Not before, not going to be in the future, right now, how do you feel? So who wants to start? How does it feel to be a Macedonian right now? Uh... Open your well, soul. Now I'm being a shrink psychologist now. <laughs> <laughs> you can lay down. And... You can lay down, yeah. As <laughs> Onat said, you lay down. Well, uh, given the last uh, few turmoils, like you said, it definitely is on a political scale a bit frustrating to be Macedonian, I would say. And other than the political situation here and, you know, the topic that is the Balkan and its nationalism, I would say, other than that, it's, it's okay. Yeah, not really, uh, not really something I can change. But General frustrating sums it up. Yeah, it sums, it sums it up, yeah. And Felker, for you? Okay. 
for me um first thank you for referring to me as macedonian so because it's been a while i hear that uh, these days i'm a citizen citizen of north macedonia at least that's what it says on my biometric residence permit both here and in the netherlands no really we are macedonians by the prespa agreement yeah macedonian but also like cross uh, citizens of North Macedonia you have to be clear because that was supposed to be in the passport only so yeah yeah but of course it, it was not gonna end up like that so to, to yeah. get to my it, point it is changing uh, a lot also like we are cannot keep keep it up <laughs> to, to get to my point why I mentioned this it's it feels confusing honestly it's mm -hmm. Uh, especially the after the name change and so on it, like every time i have to tell people where i'm from i i know what's coming and i honestly just want to avoid the conversation as, as much as possible mm. i don't even if even when i say i'm macedonian you know i i have a tingling feeling here that okay they're gonna say something now oh but wait you aren't you north macedonian now or are you like uh, from do you speak greek or it's I, I cannot blame people because of mm -hmm. course they, they're not uh, they're not engulfed in this uh, as much as we are but hearing it every time is just frustrating as Noam says and it's confusing so I, I, I try to avoid always the conversation and the explanation because it's too much context required you feel like mm -hmm. it opens up a Pandora box if you mention it definitely yes as, some people will not care, and I prefer that, but there's always going to be people who will inquire into it, and then you have to have these conversations. I'm, I'm not saying that the pot, that uh, I'm not feeling comfortable in your podcast. I actually came to discuss this, but <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. I mean, the thing is, thank you for sharing this with us. Uh, we wanted to for our followers to understand better how does the young Macedonia nowadays feel, and Hopefully you're going to share your experience and also answer some other questions that they and we find interesting. So, yeah, before we continue, this was a nice intro, so to say. Mm -hmm. Can you at least share with us a little bit more about yourselves? Just a brief overview to our guests and our followers to understand who you are. Since Naum did the last one, maybe Felker, and you actually, you said the last thing. Naum, could you say something, please? Uh... <laughs> Okay, some intro about me. Yeah, yeah, in general about you. So, uh, I'm now. Uh, I'm uh, currently working as a C++ developer. Uh, actually, a computer vision engineer, that would be the broader term. Mm -hmm. uh, I am an uh, electrical engineer by bachelor's degree, currently finishing with my master's degree. Uh, like I said, li working in Skopje, living in Skopje and Ohrid, so um, yeah, that's about sums it up for now. Do you have, do you have any hobbies? Hobbies? Uh, well, I would say that the one hobby that is uh, is occurring during the these years is uh, watching movies, actually. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick to that. <laughs> As a little and, bird told me, something against capitalism, usually. Um, I didn't hear that, sorry? Something against capitalism, as a little bird told me. Something, dy uh, something dystopian. Oh, dystopian. <laughs> yeah, I like dystopian movies. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have guessed? Like, somebody told me, like, I don't know, or I just had the feeling. Yeah. Something... Yeah, dystopian. I don't know how how you uh, <laughs> you we have spies. <laughs> As Ona said, spies, spies, spies are around us. Dystopian. I could not recommend uh, Children of Men. Uh, I couldn't recommend it less. Yes, actually. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> one of my Oof. movies. Thank you for sharing I, this with us. I watched that movie maybe like six times already. It is like, <laughs> and you still want more? Yeah, it's really, really good movie. 
I'd heard about it, but I definitely need to watch it then, since two of you like it so much. I think you'll have a, a, some kind of a flashback from the, from the quarantines during the COVID lookouts. <laughs> oh, most certainly. Yeah. Thank you, Naum. Uh, Nicola, sorry, Felker. Could you also yes, let uh, our <laughs> followers know a little bit more about you, who you are? I'm Nicola, as you referred initially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, everybody calls me Felka, so my last name. Um, I, I'm, I come from Okhrit, the same town, the same town as now, uh, from Macedonia. I'm also an electrical engineer, uh, did my bachelor in Skopje, uh, electrical engineering, and then continue to study in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, as an embedded systems engineer, my master's actually. And after that, I came here to the UK to work as an embedded system engineer at Qualcomm. That's uh, my, but this is not a job interview, so I should also probably say something unrelated to work and studying. You said but instead I, of me, I wanted to say this, yeah, please continue. But yeah. also, we need to say, another bird told me as well that you spent also some time in Germany, almost a year in total, but oh, yeah. if you don't want to mention, if you're ashamed of it, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine by me. <laughs> Nothing to be ashamed of, yeah, but... Yeah, that, that's the, that's a tough period. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were in Lager or something like in some camp. Or... <laughs> It was an internship. Come on, <laughs> it was it was one of the my, my my favorite times over the past few years. I have to agree. Met some amazing people, uh, like the the gentleman sitting. I don't know in which corner you appear in uh, <laughs> in the screen of the recording. Don't mention no, it. No matter. I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm omnipresent. <laughs> You're omnipresent. Um, yeah. So yeah, we also spent. I'm yes, I'm a scholarship holder of uh, a great program that we went to Germany. Did some scholarship. And did uh, uh, did some scholarships, did some internships at different companies, and I was lucky to be a part of that. And we're still quite active in the alumni club, which I was going to mention is uh, it's apart from all the work, I also volunteer to keep that alumni club alive, especially for the people that are abroad. So a lot mm. of people that remained in Germany and other countries, such as here. We gather a couple of times per year to to have some meetings, so I volunteer to do that. Apart from that, uh, to to follow your recipe, my hobbies. Um, I like reading, something that relaxes me after work. And also, um, I recently started, well, not recently, but I, I really like acting. So I do some silly acting and some silly sketches with some friends back home. Oh, cool. And also did some theatrical acting as well while I, I was living back home. So, But it's a hobby that I would enjoy doing even here. But uh, I don't think it's that easy to, to find people you can do silly things with. It's always an option. Onat and I share the same passion as you are regarding those things, sketches and acting and goofing around. But there's always an option. We do this through this channel. It's only one of the options that you can find some of them. I, I believe you will. Just give yourself time. Yeah. It's, all, all, it's always a good feeling for, you know, doing something in front of people. I mean, this is virtually, but hopefully one day <laughs> for all of us. Again, thank but you guys for it. Yeah. What, what on it? Yeah, I, I, ha I have some questions actually for Please. both Falker and Noam actually. Uh, you're both in a different uh, side of the brain drain, actually. Now I'm in the, his hometown, home country, and you're out, uh, outside of your country. And mostly we call surviving because for every uh, person who is not living in this hometown uh, country, it is a surviving. How does it feel to be outside of the Macedonia. Do you miss it? I mean, of course you miss it, but yeah, the struggles. <laughs> well, I have to say it's a 
it's both a big challenge and and also it's extremely exciting just uh, personally moving around for me i got used to it and it, it's always a new and exciting challenge but of course you miss a lot of things about home especially you, you your friends your family you you don't it's not that mm -hmm. easy to to make deep connections when you're somewhere else at least not initially so you do feel mm -hmm. isolation and uh, especially like during the last during the pandemic years i really hope that will not repeat again in the near future that was pretty bad I, I i felt completely isolated so going home any chance that i could just it, it it was so much better for me and now i guess i don't know i'm i'm sort of uh, before I, before coming to the uk i always thought that i'm somewhere temporary so i never really felt that i actually moved out for the long term or like completely immigrated but now i i finally get that feeling that okay i'm there's a high percentage that i'm not going back at least not in the near future or the next i don't know five ten years so i i'm I'm starting to feel a bit homesick but again then i mm -hmm. see the excitement the, the new starts the new opportunities new people and a, a lot more traveling as it's a, a lot easier to travel when you're here somewhere in europe than you're when you're back home i think anyone can vouch for that <laughs> bad connections and expensive uh, options so I, I'm, I feel excited and I just see towards the, the, the optimistic side and try to keep to stay positive. But definitely there's things you will miss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're not alone with that. Yeah, lots of us go through that. Uh, actually, all of the, as Ona said, the brain drain, yeah. It's not the same when you're a low skill or high skill worker going and coming back to your family. And knowing you're gonna come back and don't thinking about other any other options than what you're doing. And as you said, you, you started out your career in some one direction, and you're a skill not skilled but educated, high educated person. So, a lot of opportunities. But nevertheless, uh, Naomi is in Macedonia, and he is an engineer there, and he looks at least that he likes it. Although he's frustrated by many other reasons. <laughs> but uh, now, how would you say? Uh, as you being in Macedonia, how does it feel like? Uh, well, you know, uh, I didn't had the opportunity to go uh, on an internship somewhere in Europe uh, during my college years. Uh, so uh, at this moment, uh, yeah, I like it here. Uh, I have a great job, and uh, currently my focus is on uh, gaining that experience uh, needed for me as an engineer. But yeah, definitely the my focus, not right now, but maybe two, three years from now, would be to to be a part of that brain drain that you mentioned. <laughs> yeah. I mean, totally normal, uh, totally understandable. Yeah, I'm also in that. I I live in Turkey, but I am still on that. You know, inat part. I guess inat <laughs> is, is like common word for four of us. <laughs> yeah, from Slovenia <laughs> to Turkey, it's every ever inat yeah. is preserved. Yeah. <laughs> like many of the the days, I feel like oh shit, I I will leave this country. I I'm I'm not I'm not gonna deal with every like political things, <laughs> like every crisis. Oh, and uh, the next day i feel like oh no i'm not going anywhere <laughs> and but i i know it i know really like one day i will be one of them who left the country which is very, really mm -hmm. bad but also when i think about it whenever i travel somewhere i feel excited and when i ha when if i have more opportunity to go somewhere else it will be something to have fun as well with, uh, with mm -hmm. a lot of disadvantage as well. As you mentioned, yeah, people, at least people that don't understand what really what brain drain means, yeah, highly skilled people, highly educated people leave for better opportunities. People usually mean, ah, to earn better money. But no, people also want, oh. as Felker said, to travel, uh, also to experience some other things, to have fun, just, yeah, many well, other... I'd like to add also to what Donald said is... Uh, 
about it's and also about you what you said it's not about the money but also you're you're so much into politics if you're home in your home country because everything yeah. revolves around politics mm -hmm. and some people can just uh can cover their ears and eyes and just continue to live normally like I, you can earn decent money if you work as a let's say software engineer back home mm -hmm. honestly you might even earn the gross more than you would earn here yeah more yeah, yeah compared to costs and of living and everything mm -hmm. but people don't realize it's not everyone can be resilient towards all these issues that we're having and that you see in daily life so coming to live in a country such as i don't know the uk even though it's it has a million of uh, crisis financial and whatnot you still don't feel it in daily life like nobody talks about politics it's just it's, it's not a topic you hear everywhere you don't see the problems like the country functions completely normally if you see it from a daily perspective so if you follow the news of course everything will break everything is getting destroyed we're all going to die yeah. etc it's just how the news is but back in macedonia you feel it on a daily level you go out there's only a couple of conversation topics and it always comes back to politics mm. so that something i dislike uh, you see a lot of um, uh, breaking of justice and it just basically hurts you to see it so that that's another reason why it, the brain drain is happening it's not just about finding better jobs or more money yep i totally agree i mean i can say from my perspective what i noticed is like oh man like i don't hear anything about vucic i don't see any billboards of vucic i don't i'm not getting it outside of my phone or whatever. i don't see him just like i feel like oh there's some pressure that's left out so i don't feel it anymore and then when i come to serbia Oh, so this is what I was missing by quotation. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Huge, huge. Yeah. You reminded me that uh, taxi app message when I was in Serbia. I registered the taxi app and I got a message from Vucic. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What? So to, to understand, explain this, the owner of this taxi app in Serbia has the same name and surname as the president. <laughs> So people got like, "Why wow, he has this as well? Probably does, but by coincidence, it's the same guy, same name, yeah." But you know, Dushan was always, probably. <laughs> Dushan was probably. was always talking about the Vucic, which is like we all we always talk about the politics. And I got the message, and not even this, <laughs> not even here. <laughs> like he's everywhere. We have the explanation to, yeah. I mean, since we are talking about politics, we cannot avoid it. So. And they're shitty wherever you go. That's why we have this podcast. There are a lot of things that bring us together from Slovenia to Turkey, Serbia, Macedonia, in, and in Turkey, and politics themselves. And they're so, f not funny, but hilarious when you look what shitty things they're doing. So we have this expression, probably the same in Macedonia. Please tell me on it if it's the same in Turkey. We're, like, we see you a lot. Uh, to, you say to a person that is everywhere and all the time, you say, we see a lot, almost you're going to end up getting out of my fridge. We have this expression. <laughs> so they were Not saying exactly, this but about... we, have, we have something similar. What do you have? Uh, like, uh, one day he will come to my bed as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would not like to say this, especially for Vucic, but yeah. But about the fridge part, so he went to some uh, host, I don't know, some TV hosting stuff, I don't know, and he came, and there, before he came, he, there were already a couple of guests, and the hosts were like, oh, we're missing uh, our president, and they turned the camera around, and there was a huge fridge, and then he came out of the fridge. <laughs> And like they're even taking the jokes you, from the comedians. You I mean, have, it's you just... have to give it to him. Like you cannot uh, satire, like cannot create satire about something that's funnier than satire itself. So it's amazing. He, he passed the game. He finished the final level, and he's now playing completely other game that nobody played before. Yeah, totally exactly. Agree. Now that you mention it, I think he's uh, more popular in Macedonia than our politicians. So <laughs> yeah. Oh. People love him. <laughs> Sorry to say that, Dushan. What? <laughs> people, uh, I mean, people love, Macedonia love Vucic. Um, yeah, Macedonians love Vucic, yes. Love the Serbians at this point, yeah. 
yeah okay. basically you're you're the only neighbor that we don't have any problems with so yeah um <laughs> you uh, you just gave me a <laughs> what now please let like us not really uh I think uh, now that we have that uh, uh, church thing, open, open balcony. Uh, uh, I think that open balcony initiative in the right in the right direction. So I love that. Yeah. Ah, the That's open balcony one I like as well. You don't have roaming between non-EU countries on the Balkans. Um, and also less uh, taxes when you yeah and that's good but if they implement it you could be able to work instead of like going to some shitty countries like Germany or the UK you can just go and work in Albania or Serbia easy totally a dream dream come true like oh when <laughs> I was brain little, drain will shift to a different direction <laughs> if I could only go to Tirana and see those lights those oh, yeah, go, go to those lights I mean, I would, I would really like to go to Belgrade in, in like May to see the Christmas decorations. It would be amazing. Exactly from from September to May. Oh, you're lucky if it goes to May. Yeah, yeah. That's also. That, I always forget that Orthodox thing. And like last last year, the New Year Eve, we went to the Serbia, and I was excited to see like finally I will see some like real decoration about the new year i completely forget about it and then we went there and there was like nothing only melted snow <laughs> yeah the last year was completely opposite they didn't do it for some reason but uh last three or four years you're right it's it's getting hanged so for all of our followers uh, that's usually in serbia especially in belgrade from october up until april uh they are christmas decorations yeah no nope. yeah yeah christmas is we're festive all the time yeah. <laughs> Possible to well, avoid it. fireworks were good. Yeah, where the parties, there's also food. So, <laughs> speaking of food, uh, can you tell us about Ivar? So, from scale from one to ten, how much it makes you angry when the fight comes along? Where's the Ivar from? Is it from Serbia, Albania, uh, some in between? Uh, ends up with Osovo and North Macedonia or just Macedonia? I, I, I was. I thought yeah. it was Bosnian. <laughs> <laughs> Close, but I, for I now, start, not said. <laughs> Please, fucker. I will start by saying something extremely controversial here. So, if you have oh, to oh. censor it, I'm sorry, but have the beat, I don't. Yeah. I don't like Iva. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay, oh, people, please yeah. put your angry <laughs> comments below. <laughs> please, please, just make it, make it rain, make it rain. <laughs> so Even I, I, have, I have, I have Iva in my fridge now. Yeah, yeah. I, I expect my connection will be randomly dropping now. Some technical issues will occur. Exactly. So Cancelled on the spot. <laughs> so this topic is not for you. You're indifferent. Please now. Like it or not. <laughs> yeah, that was not the question exactly. It's national yeah. symbol. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, How do you I was feel getting, about? I was getting to the point. I don't care what they say. I mean, any if you take any food literally any food on the balkans you everyone will say they invented it it's not just ivar yeah like any food that that we have they'll say someone else invented it i don't know talk about something even nicer than ivar like rakia who invented rakia then is it serbian is it macedonian is it uh, bulgarian is it so is it the it, oldest... it's a pointless fight I, I i don't feel anything because you cannot prove it it's just a common. Why can't we agree that something is common? It's like it's Balkan. I just say whenever someone says like, "Oh, what's your favorite dish?" I just say, "I mean, what's your uh, best dish from your country?" I just say, "Well, w for example, we have this dish, but it's not from my country. It's just a Balkan dish. Like a lot of countries mm -hmm. have it. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go into the discussion of whose it is uh, because everyone will claim it. So, but I think for Ivor, the dispute is uh, already." done because i think it was dua lipa or someone that mentioned yeah. it's albanian so yeah there you have it she did it for <laughs> us she did us a favor hey thank you dua lipa please i mean she how, how many this. millions of followers does she have <laughs> so if they believe that ivar is albanian then that's the grand truth right if only tosha <laughs> was alive today he would have more influence than tosha Proeski, more influence than dua lipa then ivar would be truly macedonian Exactly. He he went to the same. Uh, he he was trying to establish himself in the UK, so he would be in the same position of power to claim Ivar. But unfortunately, yeah. Uh, uh, 
only because of Viver. Now, what do you think about the topic? <laughs> we, yeah, like you said, uh, it is a Balkan dish. I mean, we can say whether it is Macedonian or Serbian, uh, although we do take big pride in <laughs> the main, in the making itself of the Ivar. Uh, I have to say, Dua Lipa surprised me a bit. Uh, I didn't think that the Albanians consider it as a national dish. I didn't know it by that, mm -hmm. by then. So, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, it's a Balkan dish. <laughs> Plain and straight. And for the, sorry, just a, a bit of referencing this, for any of us followers outside of Balkans, uh, Ivar is... Uh, how can I say a dish? Uh, pay, not roasted and say? mashed uh, paprikas, mm. something like that. It's, yeah, exactly. it's a paprika spread. Roasted and mashed. We can put a link where uh, Dolipa explains it and just ends <laughs> ends up with seeing Albanian. Yeah. Also, we can put like Amazon link below so we can earn some money. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> roasted, um, mashed, and then boiled. I believe. Yes. Don't right. don't give yeah. out the recipe in public. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> that's the secret ancient Macedonian recipe. <laughs> but do you know who who took it as a national? Who branded it as a national dish, illegally speaking, in the end? Greece, uh, Slovenia. Slo no, Slovenia. No, I got it right. Yeah, Slovenia. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, I think we can all agree, like every other country, that it's not Slovenian. Totally. Like, <laughs> the least least the Ivarian thing is Slovenia. So at least Ivarian. You can agree it's in Slovenia. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing. Yeah. You you can go in this area, also Turkish influence, okay, Bosnia, Bulgaria, 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 but far away the, so much as being Slovenian oh. now that's really a tough one. No, that makes me frustrated. The the, the <laughs> initial question does not, but that makes me frustrated now. Thank you. So we we found it. We, <laughs> where's the beeper? No, yeah, we got it. Yeah. It's I it, or not? Uh, is it true that the goulash is a Turkish dish? Uh, I'm not sure because it is also for Turkish uh, cuisine. We have a lot of Balkan foods, Armenian foods, Greek foods, Arabic foods, like. It is a total mess here, <laughs> but mostly I check for the uh, etymologic uh, meaning. So yeah. gulach uh, sounds Arabic, so it might be yeah, the roots might be the Arabic. Okay, because like other countries, like I think Hungary also Especially has it as a national dish. So. You you can make similar claims about uh, many different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, for example, kebab is we all know kebab is German, right? <laughs> döner, döner, döner. It's döner. its name yeah. even not it's not even kebab. <laughs> like they steal it, they stole it from us, and they put the wrong name. <laughs> the, the local Turks did it in Berlin, so as I read, and then they yeah, promoted. Yeah. 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 But I, I, have, I heard it a lot. I heard it a lot. Like your Germans really thinks that like that it invented in Germany. But <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, okay, of course. I just I, I... <laughs> you don't argue about that. Yeah. yeah. Heads up, we're gonna have a full episode only about the food in the Balkans. Maybe it's gonna be multi episode one, probably. But yeah, dedicated to one specific dish, but time for time. Yeah. yeah. I wanna do have any following question? After uh, Ivar. I mean, I, I love talking about this, like, uh, where the food invented, because we always have a conflict with Greeks, Greece, uh, <laughs> and because they claim the yogurt, they are branding Greek yogurt, uh, like uh, baklava, I mean, baklava is not even Turkish. <laughs> uh, is it not Turkish, baklava? I think it's Arabic. It is also Arabic. Okay. Like most, most, most like desserts are from Arabic origin, uh, but we make we make them better <laughs> with such high level of self esteem. From this, so to say, transitioning from this uh, fighting, no fighting, but yeah, uh, uh, miscommunication about the food. Why? 
that's also tough for me to ask, ask this question. Why can't your neighbors leave you in peace? Yeah, start with whichever neighbor you want. Yeah, for some any reason. If I may name as looking from a side as not being Macedonian, from my point of view, all four neighbors, uh, five, four, five, uh, depending who you ask, uh, have an uh, issue with you. Even with Serbia, I was not aware of this uh, up until recently uh, regarding the church thing. Do they recognize it or not? Uh, Bulgaria, about, yeah, similar approach like Russia with Ukraine. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Albanians, I don't want to start, uh, Greece, in the name itself, so <laughs> if well, you want just to say, yeah, how, d yes, on it. Before your answers, like, I want to ask, because I don't have the Christian, like, origin, how, how do you recognize the church? Like, is there a holy oh. approval? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get a so, stamp. Uh, <laughs> and then basically... You know, Sam, there that. is no holiness, like like religious power in no. it. Okay. No, no, no. Like the church, it, I mean, it was always recognized internally. Now, how it works in the Orthodox world, you know, in in Catholic world, there's a pope. There's like mm -hmm. a central authoritative figure in the whole religion. So, well, unless you have like Church of England and you're separated or something, but in Orthodoxy, there's no there. There's sort of a central figure that resides in Istanbul, actually. Is like yeah. the grand patriarch of I don't know of the cosmos, the universe, or something. Exactly. And basically, okay. all like there, yeah, there are uh, I think thirteen or how many Orthodox churches from all the countries, and they are member of this, uh, like under this patriarch, under this main church. And the Macedonian church was not recognized as a member until this year. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, maybe last year, or this year. And the, the reason for that was that the Serbian church was not was the only one that was not recognizing it as a full member, as its own separate church. And I think that had to do something with the divides after Yugoslavia and also the Macedonian church claimed one monastery uh, that was its own, that the Serbian church has now. So... It, it was, again, something territory, something, I don't know. Mm. It, it was weird, but like no, like most people did not care about this issue because it does not really affect you in any way unless you're like super religious and both. I mean, if you're super religious, it, it shouldn't affect you as well. Like this is something of a mixed nationalism plus religion, and that then it might frustrate you. But even if you're fully religious, I mean, that doesn't matter that you believe in the Serbian Orthodox God or the, the Montenegrin or the Macedonian or the Russian, like, mm. right? But exactly. yeah, so it's even that important. was a dispute with Serbia and to, to transition into maybe the answer to, to your question, why can't our neighbors leave us alone? That's a really good question and a very difficult one to answer. It's funny when you think about it that from today's perspective, if I think fifteen years ago that that Greece would be the the least of our problems today, I would be Whoa. probably surprised. <laughs> I would never think that because growing up, it was always Greece. Like whenever you hear any problems that we have in politics in international politics, it was Greeks. Like basically, we were just. Uh, kind of hating on the Greeks as kids. I mean, that's how much we understood, just mm. hearing politics and like, oh, Greece blocks us. They don't want to use the name. Like, you don't understand why you're frustrated. So, of course, it's it's a natural response that you feel frustrated with them, you you hate mm. them, whatever. Now, we, we sort of solved that issue. And I say sort of because it's solved on paper, but not really completely applied or or respected from either side mm. uh, but with the other neighbors uh, and especially bulgaria it's it's becoming and some things are surfacing which were completely forgotten like i never remember that we had any fuse with bulgaria growing up mm. and all of a sudden like they're directly affecting my life and, and and like for them it's it's nothing it's just politics and pride but for us they're affecting my life as in i cannot go uh, into eu or anything we're getting constantly blocked because of them and therefore they're influencing me like me directly economically forcing me to leave forcing me to get a different citizenship 
because I again you're an individual person and mm. I, I don't care too much about nationalism and so on. So you see to, to find what's best for you. At least that's what I believe. So what Bulgaria is doing is honestly I don't like it. And uh they cannot leave us alone just for them to have their egos in check and to make sure they they basically what you mentioned, this this a similar approach to what Russia has with Ukraine. And I don't think that's the way for things to go forward in the world, revi re revising history in any way. I, I'm not saying that our view of the history is correct 100%, mm -hmm. but n neither can their view of the history be 100% correct. And I think it's in, in, in our best interest for every country in the Balkan is to just completely move on from history and never put it into frames of economics or daily politics or going forward. And what Bulgaria is doing is directly affecting us going forward. And a lot of people are losing hope in the country. A lot of people are losing hope in the prosperity of the future of the country. So we're, we're going to start to leave. And at the end, who cares who rules over an empty, deserted country with old people inside? I understand. It's really sad to hear this. And now this part about... Uh, Bulgaria behaving like Russia uh, for Ukraine. I mean, militaristically speaking, yeah, luckily it's not like that. But can you explain what does it mean, this approach? Uh, you know, when you ask uh, why do we have a problem with all of our neighbors, uh, yeah, there, there were a lot of issues that were unsettled when when we, you know, separated from Yugoslavia and uh, so on. But the thing with Bulgaria is different. Like you said, it is does it is similar, a lot similar with the Russia-Ukraine situation. Uh, no, uh, it's uh, from the thing that we are an easy target when you look at the Balkans and the countries in it as a whole. And every every country is, um, I would say, our standards on the Balkan are not something to, to be proud of. And what the politicians are doing are simply just picking a nationalistic team to turn the public attention on it while everything is continuing to you know fall apart and uh, and they don't have to make it this change or the next change or whatever because now the only problem is uh, you know our politics with another country mm. what the bulgarians are doing right now is sort of scaring me a bit actually because why i say it's different they don't like i understand the issue they don't uh, admit the existence of of uh, Macedonian uh, people as a whole, but uh, they claim it that uh, we are uh, some Bul part of Bulgaria, you know, like... Uh, Used Bulgarians. Yeah, Confused. like you said. Um, and uh, that our language is uh, simply a Bulgarian dialect. And uh, it is scaring me because those kinds of questions are not to be asked in twenty first in the twenty first mm -hmm. century, yes. and uh, it it is hurting and it's frustrating to hear. Given the Russia and Ukraine situation, uh, I wouldn't mind, except you know the uh, EU veto and uh, that we can't be a part of the United uh, the, the European Union, mm -hmm. but. Uh, when I hear now, and given the situation with Russia and Ukraine, uh, it is kind of scary. Scary from where these sides will take mm -hmm. <laughs> to. But I don't know. Like I said, uh, this is on on a po this is all on a politics level, and the people didn't or don't hate each other. <laughs> yeah, I would say here. I would like to ask. I wouldn't ask this. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Com total disclaimer that. What I said and what we're saying is we're not hate we're not hating Bulgarians we're hating their mm -hmm. political their government basically and the way they're governing and their politics towards us. Mm -hmm. So, I, and 
I mean, it's I, I can see how easily people can get brainwashed over propaganda in my country as well. So I do not blame people falling for propaganda in their country too. So yeah. I can completely understand that I have met regular Bulgarians that believe everything their government feeds them. I do not blame them. I, I know it's propaganda. I luckily i i'm blessed enough to be able to recognize propaganda it's uh it's the the patterns are there it's easy but sometimes even you might be under some propaganda and without realizing it so we're not really this we're not really blaming the people we're just i think what Naum said that was a good point that all the politics in the whenever there's uh, economic or any kind of problems in the Balkans, we all politicians will always resort to nationalism. They will always create some problems. You can see this everywhere, not just Macedonia or Bulgaria. You see this, I don't know, in Bosnia too often. You see this in Serbia whenever there is a big issue. Montenegro. Yeah, whenever there is a big issue, you just turn the attention of the people, mm. uh, and you just play the nationalistic card, as in we us against it's easy them. Easy picking. Easy picking. I mean, it's the core problem of nationalism, and I, I really dislike nationalism. I'm sure you can tell by now. It's it's always this us versus them mentality that cannot bring us forward because. We have, if we are against someone, we have to beat them in any in some way. And also, like one of our, maybe I refer I refer to him as founding fathers, like one of the most important historical fi figures in modern Macedonian history is uh, Alexander the Great. <laughs> <laughs> I said modern. <laughs> I'm modern. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> what what was the name? Uh, oh, you say he was not modern. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, he went with guys. Uh, he yeah. united I mean, he different was, people. He was, quite he was liberal, very progressive, actually. very liberal. Yeah, he was he quite was liberal good. actually. But we're nah. Let's not discuss Alexander. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. Now. What was the <laughs> Atze? Uh, let's not discuss Atze. Uh, so, what was the modern father? Uh, so, one of the main uh, historical oh, figures that we celebrate in Macedonia is uh, Gotze Delchev. He was he was a revolutionary fighter, and I mean Bulgarians claim he was Bulgarian and. If you see the technicalities on paper, he was Bulgarian because there was not, the, there wasn't a, a state Macedonia back then. However, he was fighting for independence. Who he was fighting? <laughs> Who he was fighting? Uh, tell them uh, uh, who goes to the Ultra for ah, fighting. <laughs> uh, he, he was fighting the the Ottomans, the Turks. Obviously, I mean, what are you gonna do in the? 20th century in the Balkans, if if not fight the Turks, it was a leisure uh, time. It, it's yeah. a leisure time, exactly. Like you don't go out, out to pubs or or things. You get drunk. You you, you make drink a, you the organize, Rakia and then you organize a revolution. Obviously, exactly. What else is there to do? No but, internet, no no <laughs> Instagram, no nothing, no TikTok. You just go and pick up some arms and go fight. What I refer to him is because he's one of the let's say. He started this um, national awakening of Macedonia. I mean, I don't know if he started it, but he was definitely a part of the national awakening of Macedonians in the region. And even what his most famous quote that we're taught even in, in kindergarten is that he sees the world as a field of, uh, of uh, cultured competition between different peoples or something like that. I mean... It's, it's just a phrase for nationalism, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> we, we fight, I mean, of course, in a sophisticated way, mm. but you can see that he's a typical uh, nationalist, and I do not blame such a person that all, it, is living in the period of national awakening, because all these talks that we have, we are seeing today's, uh, I mean, we're seeing history through our, through today's paradigm, and we see, if you think about Serbia in the 13th century, today you think about a country or so, like the people of Serbia, the Serbians, like mm -hmm. those people did not exist. They, they did not actually uh, think of them as Serbians in that, in the same way that you think of, uh, of yourself as a Serbian today. Like, I identity an, was completely different back then. It's invention and of the 19th century. Yeah. It's, it's so recent and we're, we're used to seeing everything through the same paradigm of, of nations. Nations did not exist. Like, when when people and this is the main argument that Bulgaria has against Macedonia today is that all these figures that we celebrate and 
and mentioned as Macedonian that they were Bulgarian. I mean, obviously, if if you live in a in if they had a political system back then that classified them as Bulgarian, technically they are Bulgarian, right? If you see it in that period, mm. but we have this something called self determination that we sort of recognize as a human right these days. And I say sort of because it's only on paper. And mm. if if we can get the, yeah. If people feel a certain way, especially if a large group feels a certain way, you you have to respect their right to identify as, I don't know, Martians, whatever the hell they want to be. But if enough people identify as something, you cannot take that right away from them. Onat was mentioning this, right, Onat? You said history is, is not so important. Important is how people feel, right? Y yeah, I mean, this uh, nowadays popular saying... Uh... X, X is a made up country. I mean, which country is not made up country? I mean, there was, that's the thing. was that, there that's what I was uh, Serbia and Turkey and like Greece like 2000 years ago? There was. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, we all made those up. Maybe our country <laughs> is older than some of the countries. Uh, some countries are has uh, newest, like youngest history but it is not uh, it is not the thing who determines of the existence mm. of a country and some other cool. country is even not a decision maker of a, another country yeah like you said i mean what's the what's the time limit <laughs> especially in europe <laughs> yeah for a community <laughs> That by looking at through those lenses, so means that Macedonia is going through a rough period because you're still young, takes time, so you need to age like a proper wine. Then you can call yourself whatever you want, be whatever you want, be wherever you want. So be patient. <laughs> yeah. It's not written how long, but it takes time. The process, <laughs> painful one, I guess. Yeah, we just need to live through it. Some yeah, people live, um, our, our ancestors live through it, and just now <laughs> you need to be those ones. I mean, we're not sure that this nation thing will last, and we're not sure how many more years we'll be living with this division of the. I mean, the, we, we are idiots to believe that the the map that we see today is final. <laughs> we would be very naive to believe that the map of Europe, like even European Union what? countries, is final. Like we would be super naive to believe that. I mean, this is the yeah the uh, long longest period of peace in Europe and That's I mean true, it was yeah. broken last year but it was about 70 something years of peace mm -hmm. and we take it for granted as in oh we're living in peaceful time these days so yeah. this is this yeah, is like sort of worrying me and all these rhetorics and you never yeah, know like when someone decides oh I'm just going to absorb you because I don't I don't give a shit about your existence as a country or whether you you feel as a Macedonian or a Serbian or whatever or a Ukrainian which actually they did or Turkish so not to be left out on it <laughs> not to be left out yeah <laughs> you want to ask something on it no I, I was saying like uh, I'm not sure if there will be any United States or United Kingdom in 10 years I mean yeah as Felker said, we are taking it granted and we are thinking like it was always like this. We, we like forgetting the history. We have a problem now because the last generation that actually saw the horrors of the World War, the Second World War, is dying out. So mm -hmm. in a few years, we'll, ha we'll have no people with any living record of all the atrocities and horrors that went through the Second World War. And as we as we had get younger politicians and more ambitious politicians, they they will not. It's it's not so easy for the human mind to comprehend the massive scale of death and destruction that went about eighty or hundred years ago. Like when you say six million uh, Jewish people died in World War Two, what? How do you envision six million? Like just in your head, as a as an individual, can you imagine thousand people, ten thousand people? What's six million to you? Is it's probably the same as imagining just a large group of people in a concert 
which maybe has 2000. Mm. So these are numbers our brains cannot comprehend as and as we get younger leaders and more ambitious and we're getting again to this uh, nationalistic rhetoric of oh we have problems someone else is to blame of course it's not us mm. then how are we going to stop history from repeating itself? I mean we have history deniers these days. Yeah. So this is what worries me going forward. Uh, no, uh, I won't say that uh, there's on onset of a third world war or anything like that, or uh, oh, somewhere in your only in Europe aside, of course, uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, what uh, he was saying, and I like to add to it, is that uh, the politics, the politics of nationalism leads to this actually to live in the constant fear and the constant possibility of a war breaking out somewhere and mm -hmm. uh, you be to be prepared for it as a country and that is not a way for a system to function and yeah that is what is scaring me in the balkans right now but uh, i'm not going to Say I'm not going to put it into words that there is a possibility of something breaking out, but uh, mm -hmm. just living in the constant fear and somebody just mentioning it as a possibility is uh, is horror enough. I agree totally. I mean, it's the same everywhere. I, I either we're speaking about Serbia, Macedonia, or Turkey. It's the easy pickings, and people get easy, people get easily ignited by those topics, and just a psychology of masses. And not to say that we are anything different than the rest of the people. And as uh, Pelker said, we are so to say blessed. Some people are not blessed by this, just noticing the patterns. Some people don't want, or they want, but they don't know how to cope with it, so they just go along. And it's tough. It's definitely tough. And uh, the thing is, what can we do from our side? Is just constantly reminding people to think differently and to be open-minded that's the only way approach and when people feel cornered just leave them just let them be uh there's time and place for it hopefully they'll come through it hopefully they're gonna be more open at least so we are not the same we're going through the phases throughout all of our lives yeah, uh, probably we all went through the nationalistic phase when we were young, really young. Of I course, mean, yeah. you, I guess you it's fall like... for it. You, of course, you fall for it. There is propaganda everywhere around you, and it mm. takes time. Oh, that, that's why I said, like, unfortunately, not all people afterwards grow out of that phase. I, I would like everyone to grow out of that phase and just see the actual mm. problems and not yeah. uh, for the nationalistic card not to work on them when the politicians pull it out. But that's not happening and this is the biggest frustrating thing when when i lived back home like any any sort of problem we have oh now we have a problem with this country with those with or i mean for us it was always with uh, albanians uh, as mm. as they're the largest minority in the country so like we all go through the same problems no matter if you're albanian or macedonian but whenever they 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 want to hide some big problem they'll just pull out the nationalist card and I mean, this is the ruling political parties, both Macedonia and Albanian. They always do the same games just to scare the people of a conflict breaking out. So you live in constant fear of that. And people believe it. Like you can recognize all the bullshit, mm. but this is what I'm trying to to stay away from. It's so difficult for for this not to affect your daily life if you're if you're living there and you just do not isolate yourself in a cave. You see it everywhere. Yeah. Now you would want to say something. Uh, no, I just added that uh, it's not on, not only the ruling parties; it's everyone. Yeah. And what's yeah. the funny thing? The the ones that, that are throwing stones at each other are at the end sitting in Kafana and talking the same stuff over again and probably organizing this whole thing. It's not a conspiracy theory; it's just, no. it just looks like it. It just sees it's. Yeah, Definitely. it's artificial. It's even proven. I mean, we even have proof of that. There were some leaked phone calls back from the previous ruling party that basically showed that. And and this is not this is not surprising. It's not something new. It's not isolated. There's there's 
has been happening everywhere. Mm. They're just putting the show for for people. Again, this sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's really not. It's it's simple. There's a lot of lots of proofs and situations where it was shown just collaborating to create chaos for the masses. Yeah. yeah. Same everywhere. So to spin this thing on into some lighter topic, uh, I would like to ask a question. Republic of Vepchani. What the f, f is that in Macedonia? It's Macedonian <laughs> Catalonia. <laughs> Macedonian <laughs> Catalonia. No. But it's currency and everything. I heard they also have currency. Can you say what is it? I think now I might explain it better. Please, now you're an expert I... in Vepchani. <laughs> no. No, no, I would say I'm an expert in Bepchen. I just uh, think uh, I don't think I can explain it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is it a is it a place something like uh, you know hippies live or <laughs> no? It's a place where... hippies. <laughs> <laughs> no. What's interesting in, like, about in that? In Netherlands, there are like places where people go there and like hippies. It's like a bit more legal. Everything like. Uh, they wish I will, you would like. Yeah, we wish. We wish. No, it, it's more of a. <laughs> so, let me give you a bit of a, a bit of context of Vefchani. It's uh, surrounded by a lot of villages where the majority of Albanians live, and they are like trying to. I mean, in some way, to balance out uh, the tensions, so they they like to keep it clean, the village, uh -huh. and. Uh, they they have they have also they're the source of many rev famous revolutionaries during the 20th century so they're a very proud village and they're very self-sufficient their own hospital and everything and it's I, I i think it was a joke that they they did some passports and currency and everything for tourists they have an extremely famous carnival but maybe i, I could be completely wrong on this maybe it was serious Please, if there's some Vevchani watching us, listening us, please write down something about Vevchani. Just we want to learn more about it. You're really uh, it's, it's hard a to find. Fascinating and a beautiful place. Yeah, Vevchani is a municipality in the Struga region, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they jokingly or not claim that they are a country within a country, <laughs> and uh, they made their own currency and they may, made which, of course, it's not used uh, on a grand scale in Vevchani, but made their own currency and they made their own passports jokingly. And like Dushan said, they have less problems than our country as a whole. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure they don't mind to claim the, <laughs> the whole country. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Take an over. By yeah. a totally uh, underdog, like oh, we're talking about yeah. Bulgaria, about Albania, uh, well, uh, so, uh, and then eventually comes along. And I really like their out. model. Actually, I, I'm I'm advocating Maybe. for the same thing to happen for <laughs> Ohrid, the Ohrid region. It would be really nice to succeed from Macedonia and just join some big country. I don't know, like the Netherlands offered them a mountain and a lake. So they can just come in and pour money into it. Why not? Yeah, it would be a good, good economic <laughs> <Business> model. model. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Guys, uh, one last question from my side uh, about the language itself. Uh, can you explain for people from Romania, Albania, Greece that don't speak Slavic or, in general, don't understand the differences? Can you explain, is it Macedonia more similar to Serbian or to Bulgarian or is it the region to region and how is the standard one comparing to the standard Serbian, standard Bulgarian? No? Well, uh, there, well, of course, it depends where in Macedonia the dialects are, which dialect uh, particularly. So the Eastern dialects are really similar to the Bulgarian Western dialects. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the northern part of Macedonia, especially Komanovo, is uh, Komanovo's dialect is uh, really similar to Vranje's dialect in Serbia. Uh, so uh, our 
standard uh, language, the Macedonian language, was based on the dialects of uh, Veles, Prile, Bitola, and Ohrid. And uh, when you look, when you look from far here, uh, you'll notice this uh, continuum, this language continuum uh, in the dialects, which uh, you know, as you approach eastern, uh, the dialects sound similar to Bulgarian. As you approach northern, the dialects seem, sim seem similar to uh, Serbia. I'll take uh, Tetovo's dialect uh, also in account. It is really closer to the Serbian dialect than from mm -hmm. many other than from many other uh, country around us. So uh, that claim that uh, this is a Bulgarian dialect sounds really, really uh, funny to me because, of course, when you look at it from afar, that continuum is uh, just beats the the logic of it. Mm. Kalkar, would you like to add something? I mean, I agree with what Noam said. The thing is, uh, you can make a claim about any language being a dialect originating from a different language. Like, we all originated from Indo Indo European languages in the past, and language is a living thing. So, what happened with Macedonian? It was standardized. I mean, it was standardized quite recently, even though people were not retrained overnight. Oh, here's the new language. You have to learn it now. And that's our official language. <laughs> they were not yeah. retrained. They, they spoke like I, I can, I would have, I've spoken with my grandparents many times on this topic and they, they come from the, let's say the southwestern part, which is the most isolated from neighboring, neighboring Slavic speaking countries. And they've always had the same tongue and they've always found it a bit more difficult to understand Serbian or Bulgarian if they're not aware of the language. For us younger people, understanding Serbian is definitely easier than understanding Bulgarian, unless you're from the eastern part of the country. And that's mainly because we're much more exposed to Serbian culturally than we are to Bulgarian. Personally, I understand. I can probably say I understand 99.9% .9 of Serbian. And uh, I mean, just from all the, the from watching movies, from music, from uh, Serbian friends, and so on. Well, my understanding of Bulgarian is pretty bad because. I just have not really come across to Bulgarian too often. And when I when I, sp I tried many times to speak with Bulgarians, and at the end, we always end up speaking in English. So if oh. th the language is that similar, like that should never happen. Mm. Like, yes, the grammar is similar, but vocabulary, there's quite some large difference in vocabulary. And, and our vocabulary, I think, is closer to, to Serbian. Now, if I don't want to get into the politics of how that came to be or whether that was uh, intentional made. You always uh, come to politics. <laughs> yeah. it's, if, I mean, we're talking yeah. about topics in the Balkans. Like, is it, is it even possible not to mention politics or history? Mission impossible, yeah. <laughs> but th th the main takeaway is just don't, just don't care who or where or where the i mean where the language originated from what it is whether it's a dialect of english or bulgarian or russian or whatever enough people speak it enough people call it their own just let them be and that that's my main message for all the neighbors just just let us be nobody is doing you any harm basically exactly but Bulgarians helped you. I need to add this uh, with the uh, newest song, or the old, newer version, Vasco Jabata, which oh, yes. is a mega hit across the Balkans. So here you are a bit to it, wash it up. Came, a bit this, it because. came this close to resolving the dispute, like this close. <laughs> but, yeah. Needs higher power. Yeah, than that. Yeah, Onat, if you don't know, that's like a song from Bulgaria that even in non-Slavic speaking countries was popular in Albania, in Romania. I heard they all also... Yeah, they made a lot of jokes about it. It's gotten about it for around uh, two or three months, but thanks, I'm Googling it right now. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, it sings about uh, agricultural machine, and it says in the end one part, don't fight with each other, don't do something, uh, I don't know, but 
it's also like a song of peace of uh -huh. pacif pacifism <laughs> yeah some way from yeah. agricultural machine to pacifism very, very deep philosophical <laughs> it's an amazing musical just like just like Vasco but... just yeah. like Vasco the frog by the Vasco way the frog yeah Vasco the frog yeah it's i mean the and song it doesn't there. it's not called like this it's just sets of the parents part i will let you know later on and uh, for the followers <laughs> that don't know it we'll put in the description as well this is also one important information to yeah we will definitely put it yeah i think you know, you mentioned Vasco Javata and all, all my negative thoughts and disputes I had with Bulgaria are gone. Yeah, you see? <laughs> it's it's that easy, people. That but... easy. Yeah. That easy. I mean, the conclusion is, uh, if you put away politics, nationalism and stuff, we have much more things in common and much more less things to fight over, but to have fun over. And speaking from the point of view of Macedonians, speaking from the point of view of Serbians and Turks and other Balkan people, if you just open up a bit, you'll open yourself a completely new world that's much more similar to you and you can much more enjoy it and make changes with with brain drain or without brain drain. That's But you know, there's a slogan for Snickers, when you're hungry, hungry you're not what you are. So for the ah. Balkans, without politics, you're not what you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. If somebody's <laughs> hungry of that, yeah, yeah, true. Then we need to find another diet. With, uh, without yeah, it, yeah. yeah, more uh, more Ivar itself and less quality <laughs> behind Ivar, or for Felker no Ivar, something else. Okay, he doesn't eat Ivar, yeah. so yeah, Chevap, don't worry, I'll, I'll find something. We have we have a lot of good food in the Balkans. Yeah, pasta I mean, yeah. We have to agree, we're a lot more similar than we are all different. So, mm. yeah, good. We all agree on this one. Yeah. Thank you guys for your time. It was really fun. Um, by the way, for all of our, us, our followers, if you want anything else to ask those two guys, we'll put uh, links of your profiles. And also, if there are a lot more questions that we ask, maybe, maybe we can do a sequel to okay. answer those questions with us two, uh, with us four of, four of us, and have more fun. Yeah, if you are in for it. Sure. You yeah. Don't sound optimistic. <laughs> De depends depends how angry the comments will be <laughs> ah okay okay got, the, the angrier the angrier the better okay yeah. King that means we did our job <laughs> what what did you say no i'm always looking forward to enter a balkan fight so yeah <laughs> In the comments the biggest okay. patriots of them all the online <laughs> patriots yeah yeah. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I, I can I can start the first two comments so so they don't have to actually write them. So it's Macedonia is Greek, Macedonians are, are Bulgarians, and Kosovo is Serbia. Those are the three comments that will appear in any Balkan video. So. <laughs> <laughs> and autochtony, autochtony as well. Uh, oh yes, autochtony as well, of course. And then we so, can continue. Yeah. And yogurt is Greek. <laughs> so we got everything covered. Yeah, Everyone can have everything to fight over. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I can also add Cyprus is Turkish. <laughs> you see? So it just rolls and rolls and we end up ending up on our tails again. Yeah. <laughs> so simple. Yep. Yeah. Wanna something? Yeah, uh, thank you guys. Uh it was really uh fun episode for our it is like the best we can ask for like for for our first episode uh thank you again for joining us for spending your time with us today uh yeah and also i agree with tushan we would like to have you again with more uh you know specific topics more different uh chats so yeah thank you Thank you again for having us, guys. It was great fun. You're I would welcome. be glad to join again if invited. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the comments. No kidding, yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try our best. Yeah. Thank you again. It was really nice. And, and of, I didn't say I wish you great success with your podcast. Oh. Just, 
it's the first episode i wish you thousand more and and even more it depends how much you want to do it <laughs> greater would start than this i mean look at us <laughs> of course from this point on it cannot go south it can, it can only, only go it up can only get better yeah <laughs> only up up that's why i ask you to be the first ones yeah you, you got you got the point you got the point the bar very very low thank you <laughs> you're not supposed to say that but okay nevertheless yeah. moving forward <laughs> thank you guys stay safe right, and guys. talk to you again bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye.